On behalf of AmWestEntertainment.com and AmWager.com, I'm Joe Christofek, joined as always by the man, the myth, the legend, the incomparable one, Pat Cummings. And Pat, it's week six of ten of the Dubai World Cup Carnival. Time flies and you're having fun. Yeah, I'd like to be having a little more fun, Joe, considering that we've been really close the last couple of weeks with some winners. Haven't quite gotten over the top with a few of them. But uh, again, close counts if you're betting it correctly in horse racing. So we're going to try and uh, swing things back into action here as we start the second half of this year's carnival. Yeah, and that speaks to the competitiveness of the racing. And, Pat, I was very happy on Tuesday morning when I woke up, opened up my email, and found nominations had been released for the Dubai World Cup Day card. They can be found in their entirety for all those big races at DubaiRaceNight.com. The World Cup itself, $10 million purse, 341 nominations, 15 countries represented, 30 American horses. Horses, including Breeders' Cup Classic champion Mucho Macho Man. And for more information on the carnival in its entirety, visit amwestentertainment.com. The comprehensive is there. Free pass performances on a weekly basis, valuable track and statistics, valuable Pat Cummings selections and detailed analysis, and also live video of the races every Thursday, as well as Super Saturday and Dubai World Cup Saturday as well. Pat, lots to talk about, so give us your Cliff Notes version recap of Carnival Week 5. Two big races, the 1,000 guineas for the Phillies and Itamal. Proved us wrong, Joe. We liked Wedding Ring. We thought she was probably more proficient and she was fresher, uh, or rather at least more seasoned uh, off of the layoff. But Itamal uh, was very impressive winning, and and so we were wrong there with Wedding Ring. It it was close, I know. Uh, And then... uh, Prince Bishop uh, in the Mock Tomb Challenge, you know, there's a lot of uh, bluster back and forth about who's wearing what cap and whether it's first, second, third string Godolphin. Prince Bishop wasn't wearing any blue silks, no blue, white, or red cap belonging to those blue silks. He was wearing the green. He stepped up at a big price of 17 and one, 17 to 1. And really, he ran the best race of his life at the age of 7, not something you see all that often. Uh, Prince Bishop got it done in the Mock Tomb Challenge. We'll move on. The third round comes up on Super Saturday. Well, going into this Thursday, once again, you can get free Timeform U.S. past performances at timeformus.com through Super Saturday of the Carnival. They are fantastic. They're easy to use. A different way of approaching the races, especially on an international scale. And Pat, Thursday, February the 13th, 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time will be the first post. Six thoroughbred races on tap. Featured race is race number two, the $250,000 UAE 2000 Guineas, 1,600 meters on tapita. Now, it's jam-packed with quality, this card from beginning to end. Four races on the tapet, including the featured guineas, four three-year-old males traveling a mile in the all-weather. We're going to get to that momentarily, Pat, but first, you're going to waste no time in providing us with your best bet on the card, which happens to come in the opener. Yeah, field of 16 are scheduled to go, and they're going uh, 2,000 meters uh, on the tapita. And uh, to be honest, look, this is a... Uh, it looks like a wide-open race on paper, I would suggest. Um I I don't think it's as wide open as it might look. Uh, I really like the chance for improvement from number eight, Sanchavez. He ran a very good fourth in his first up run, uh, and and I just think he's a horse that that will step and and move forward uh, for Mike DeCock. I think they're very happy with him and what he's done so far. We liked him a lot in his first up run back in uh, the early part of the carnival, but I like Sanchavez, made him the best bet of the day. He is the morning line favorite. It's his first, uh, you know, time at the carnival, and so there are certainly some question marks. But I'm going to try and get it right out of the box uh, with a good one. Send Chavez in the first best bet of the day. Well, best of luck with that, Pat. And look, to me, the 2,000 guineas is a fascinating race. The 3-to-1 morning line favorite is the classy group one winning Aussie, Long John. Co-9 to 2 second choices are horses who finished 1-2 in a January 16th allowance at the Carnival, Emirates Flyer, and Safety Check. They both should run, uh, run well stepping up in class here. Yeah, let's talk about Long John real quick. Long John has the form line of the race. He won the Group 1 Caulfield Guineas. He beats a horse named Seamus Award, who was third in that race. Seamus Award comes back and wins the Cox Plate against older horses. Now, Long John finished uh, beating about seven lengths in that race. That was the toughest race that any horse in this field has faced. He did it carrying 49 and a half kilos, granted. Now he's back up 10 kilos uh, for that last effort and back in against his own age group. 
Now, here's the thing. I just don't know if they're going to go over the tapita. So let's talk about the horses who have. And let's go back and take a look at the uh, 2000 Guineas trial. A couple of horses to take a look at here. In fact, four of them in particular. On the lead, we have My Catch. He comes back. He's drawn in gate seven this week. He's on the lead in this video. Then in behind him is the eventual winner, Emirates Flyer in the all blue. Behind him on the rail is Safety Check. He's wearing the blue with the white cap. And then in the two path, kind of just behind an outside safety check is full combat. Full combat comes back and is drawn in gate 11 in this spot. Here's the thing. Full combat, interestingly enough, is really the first horse off the bridle here. He's really being pushed along by Paul Hannigan from a long way out. Uh, Emirates Flyer and Safety Checks at ground saving trips. And if you remember, Joe, we didn't have a really strong opinion in the trial when it came to be. My catch was a long shot. He went to the front and he stayed in what was a fairly fast pace. So I'm really a little bit curious as to if any of these horses are able to move forward, given that the first, second, and third place finishers, granted in slightly reverse order, but they were one, two, three on the rail for most of the trip. Full combat really had a little bit of work in here. It was a good blow, I think, coming first off the layoff, and now he's going to have to improve, and I think it, it is well within him. He was doing his best running late, recorded the fastest final 200 meters. So I've sided with full combat in this spot, and I just question if, if any of the other two are uh, the, the – Former Godolphin runners who now aren't wearing the blue, they're in green colors of Sheikh Hamdan uh, bin, uh, bin Muhammad Al Maktoum. I, I just don't know if, if they think they're all that good. Well, Pat, I didn't think the winner Emirates Flyer or the runner-up safety check, although they saved ground, I don't think either one had a great trip because they both steadied, they both got shuffled back on the inside, and both wound up uh, running very impressive races, in my opinion. Yeah, I felt actually safety check was a little better. I made them both 9-2 to two on the morning line because I thought they ran very similar races, but that safety check might have had some more trouble and kind of a stop start, and he went to the lead and then backed off. But I don't have a, a really wild opinion on the race, but uh, I do think full combat will be slightly ignored as you know not all the Mike DeCock horses are all that ignored. I think he might be one of them that gets slightly ignored here. So I thought the value was there. And I'm interested to see how third-place finisher Mike Hatch comes back because he was very gutsy in that show performance and I think with his speed and I think he potentially has some upside he may run even better than he did last time which would put him right there but Pat you kind of got to be careful because these horses are stepping up in class and we've got some classy individuals and a little bit of jockey maneuvering as well you've got Sylvester D'Souza was on Emirates Flyer now on Pax Amadia, then you've got Mikhail Barzalona, who was on safety check, now on Long John. And in addition to that, you've also got Wednan, who is first up for Mike DeCock, uh, hasn't raced in September. This horse could be any kind as well. So that's why I think this is a fascinating, fascinating it, race. No, it is, and it's why I think what we saw from Full Combat, he was really the only horse who did the majority of his running late and now over the extra 200 meters. I, I think that's why I ended up there. Let's see how that one plays, and we'll move into the fourth race, which is the Group 3 Fire Break Stakes. Pat, this one for older horses traveling a mile on the Tapita. Pat, Varsity Club has won 14 of 19 career starts, but all of those wins coming on turf, he hasn't had a run since June. He's never run on all weather. He's your 8-5 to five morning line favorite here, but some question marks maybe. Look, he's the two-time reigning South African Horse of the Year. Uh, this guy always shows up. There are absolutely question marks. Now, first off, this is not the toughest edition of the fire break stakes we've ever seen. We know that. Uh, and it says that when, you know, Snowboarder is, is the only Godolphin runner here, that says something, I think. Uh, he's a horse that was be beaten handily here by uh, Tamar Kuz, who has been a no-show at the Carnival this year. Uh you know, we, we tried to, to get on that ship uh, when he was first up. That didn't work out so well. Snowboarder ran a good fourth in the UAE Derby last year. So, look, you know, he's run okay here in the past, but he's far from the types of horses that they brought here uh, prior to this. So, look, Variety Club, eight to five, first up. He's been in Mike DeCock's yard, although trained by Joey Ramsden, who's been overseeing from afar. Uh, and then you have Mars in here. That, that's really interesting. But there is one horse I wanted to take a, a closer look at, and that's Capital Attraction, Joe. Uh, he's a horse that uh, last time he ran, uh, it was in one of those really wide open handicaps. Let's go back to the video here. He's on the, the really the front end and the thing that attracts me most about him, I mean, granted, he had a ground-saving trip, but 
After the first 400 meters of this race, the horses who were first, second, and fourth finished 14th, 16th, and 15th. Capital Attraction was third after the first 400 meters, and he ran third at the end. To me, it was a really huge effort to stay with the pace. The winner, Alexander Palace, comes over the top. Alexander Palace was 15th after the first 400 meters, so I thought it was a good sign for Capital Attraction. Well, Pat, tell me a little bit more about this Mars character. He's uh, held his own against group competition at some of the toughest race meets, and I think even off the bench he may be ready for an out-of-this-world performance. I know he's really very well regarded. Uh, He is a a winner on all weather. He won by four and a half lengths on debut and then didn't come back until his three-year-old season last year uh, to make his debut, uh, you know, midway through the spring. Uh, this horse was privately purchased uh, by a group uh, mostly led by a Wilgerbush Drift stud out of South Africa. He's definitely a stallion prospect, but they think he has a very, very uh, substantial potential for them. Uh, I, I just think Varsity Club is, or, or excuse me, rather Variety Club is the one, uh, if he is 100%, uh, he, he has just been much too good. I mean, we're talking about an Eclipse Award type horse here, just South Africa's version, the Equus Award winner. Uh, I think he's tough to beat, and the rest of the field leaves me really wanting. Should be interesting. Pat, race number five is the Al Shingdaha Sprint, 1,200 meters on the all-weather, 7-2 morning line favorite, United Color, edged Russian Soul in their January 16th encounter, but the latter broke slowly, was hung wide, they renewed their acquaintance here, and they both appear to be top contenders. Yeah, we have to go back and take a look at that, Joe. The Dubawi Stakes from the second night of the carnival. Four horses to look at. United Color, who wears the yellow silks. Russian Soul, who had a bit of a stutter step at the start. Rafige in the blue and white striped cap. And then Belmont Mast in the red and white striped cap. Look, United Color was a little bit more forwardly placed, but the pace wasn't all that fast in that race, Joe. And this is a really good ride from James Doyle. And worth noting, we'll talk about one of his bad rides a little bit later. But anyway, <laughs> Russian Soul is the, really the only horse who makes any real progress closing into the pace. Uh, Rafige, look, this is a horse who was really low rated to begin the year, and he's really done a lot of, of good, but he saved some ground. And gosh, I'll tell you, he was really rank in the early part of the race, and I'm surprised they didn't give him his head and let him go on. So I'm, I'm somewhat reluctantly tipping United Color. I, I, I just... I can't entirely get on him, Joe, but but I am going to tip him because I think this race might be a little faster and he'll ri- be ridden a little more off the pace and might get another good setup. He's well drawn in gate three in a big field, and that can be tough if you, for those who are drawn out wide in a, in a six for a long race. Well, Pat, what about a horse like Pearl Flute? Proven class, good third of 14 last out behind a legitimate horse in Anaerobio after setting the pace over 1,400 meters of grass cuts back to try Tapita for the first time, and I think this horse could be a sleeper 15-1 to 1 on the morning line. You know, Joe, uh, good one to bring up, uh, because in a race where you don't have a really overly strong opinion, it doesn't hurt to get a little creative. I think he is going to show some speed, so I think you're probably in a good place there. Uh, it's just a question of how well he gets over this type of surface. Uh, drawn on the inside, it will probably go forward. I, I don't think you're off base by all that much joe so risk versus reward mr for sure absolutely (laughs) all right well race number six is the finale it's the ford edge sport trophy pat this is a grass marathon you've got some interesting info here that leads into a playable long shot yeah let's take a look the track is stat of the day here in this mile and a half plus race two horses that come out of uh, the same race from January 23rd. It was the second race that day over the same trip. And that's uh, two horses in this race, Top Class and Dormello. Top Class covered 15 meters more than the winner, Sir Tarek, when he was second behind Sir Tarek. Dormello was 14 meters uh, wider, covering 14 meters more than Sir Tarek. And both of those horses in that same race, respectively, covered nine and six meters more than excellent result. Well, Excellent Result comes back and wins. Sir Terra comes back and runs behind Excellent Result in a, in a you know, very formful race. Uh, I thought Dormello was sent to the lead much too soon. When you hit the lead 
from off the pace at the top of the stretch at Maidon. It's really tough to sustain that run. You know, we saw a horse like Mujarib in the uh, Al Rashidiyah. He was propelling off the top of the stretch, but he didn't hit the lead until they were well into the straight, Joe. It was, and, and even then he almost lost because he, he floundered on the front end. I think Dormello's a sneaky one here. Top class, for that matter, is sneaky, too. Top class might be a little bit shorter. Dormello might be a little ignored. He hasn't won in a long time. I'm going to make Dormello the am wager value play of the day somewhere around that 20 to 1 mark. I just think the value might be there. And frankly, if uh, if he and United Color run uh, the, the last double of the day, it will be an owner, trainer, jockey double to end it. Hopefully I can get right with one of them at least. I'd love it if it were two of them and probably would love it more if it was Dormello at 20 to 1. Well, Pat, I agree with you. Satiric, excellent result. That's a key race that these horses exit in. Dormello at 20 to 1, especially if you're trying to play catch up in the Derby Wars contest. The perfect kind of horse. And that leads me into the free contest that we talk about every week. I played for the first time, Pat, last week. The contest fills up quickly, so don't waste any time getting involved in that. That was absolutely no match for Tommy Gunn, who fired big time. He had He's No Saint, Prince Bishop, and for good measure, Mont Rass in the finale for an eye-catching total of 114 bucks, earning $75 of free money. Maricela, 45, earns 50 bucks for second, and Mr. Ed grabs 25 bucks for the showdown. And as I mentioned, it's a free contest. So if you love horse racing and competition, you haven't tried Derby Wars yet, you are missing out on a ton of fun, daily games, Different racetracks suiting all skill and bankroll levels. Also, join Horse Racing Nation fans worldwide talking about racing on a daily basis. Follow on Twitter, follow on Facebook, and join the nation at horseracingnation.com. And, Pat, that leads us into what you've been waiting for this entire broadcast to reveal your selections on the card. Man, I got a feeling you're going to be on fire, buddy. I hope so. Uh, San Chavez in the first for me, Joe. Uh, he's the best bet of the day, uh, improving, I think. Full combat in the Guineas. Gabriel in the third race. That's a really tough race, that third race. It has a lot of different ways you can go. It gets South Africa's three-year-old champion. Versin Getrix is here. He's the favorite. Gabriel's a winner in a uh, second here at the Carnival. Tough race. Uh, even though you have some, some recent form to go off. So I, I went with Gabriel. Variety Club, United Color, Dormello to round it out. Those are my picks. What about you on the spot, please? Well, Pat, I'm going to go with two classy horses that probably will offer shorter prices, but I think they have a huge chance to win. And Long John in race number two and Mars in race number four. Then trying to drop a little bit of a price play here at 15-1 to on the morning line, race number five, number two, Pearl Flute. Pat, let's talk about the bankroll challenge. Uh, neither one of us did all that well last week. You had five to place on Diesel Leader and have inched within three dollars of me in the bankroll challenge. And that was that was the most valuable leftover five dollars uh, of the day, so to speak. Bankroll challenge this week. Uh, I, I took forty to win on San Chavez in the first, thirty to win on Full Combat in the two thousand guineas. I took a $20 play on Dormello, 6 to win, 14 to place in a ladder, and then an exact in that race as well. I'm going to use top class and Dormello over six total horses. Those two included $10 to play, and that's my $100 for Thursday. Well, Pat, I'm going to go with 30 to win on the two horses that I think have a good chance to cross the line first. Long John, race two, Mars and race four, and then spread a little bit more with race five selection, Pearl Flute, 10 to win, and 30 to place. Now, don't forget, we talk about horses we like on paper on this video, but Pat and I are constantly tweeting during the course of the Carnival programs, and last week, Pat, Based on physicality, based on form, I nailed the try in race number two and tipped Mont Rass on looks in the finale. So how these horses look and act in the parade ring and on the racetrack before the races go to the gate, also very important information before you step up to the plate and the window. Absolutely. Look, you have to... Uh, you have to be an all-encompassing handicapper these days. It's not just one number. It's the full picture, the full analysis. And look, even though you put out these tips a couple of days in advance, uh, there can always be some slight adjustments as the day goes on, and, and you really have to adjust to how things are going. And look, that's, that's the world in which we live. It's a good one. It's an exciting one, and it's why we love the carnival. As golfers like to say, how many weapons do you have in your bag? The more weapons you have, the better chance you have to score. 
Pat Cummings, going to be a great night on Thursday. Looking forward to week six of the carnival. I hope to see all of you in the free Derby Wars contest I'll be participating in bright and early in the morning. First post will be 9.45 a.m. For the incomparable one, Pat Cummings, I'm Joe Christofek. Enjoy week six of the Dubai World Cup Carnival.